What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mike Versbro, and today I wanna to talk about a better way to create sharper and cleaner night images, so stay tuned for that. Using programs like Starry Landscape Stacker or Sequaders really help night photographers take sharper and cleaner images. Now I used to use my 14 to 24 millimeter lens quite often at 14 millimeters wide, and that's because even at f2 or f3.2, the whole scene would be sharp when I set it to infinity. So my foreground would be nice and sharp and so would the stars, so stacking was very simple. Now I've made some changes to my gear recently and I acquired the 20 millimeter 1.8S lens. Now this lens is punched in a little bit more than 14 millimeters, so I have to be cautious of how close I stand to my foreground feature. I came across this problem when I was photographing some driftwood in Virginia, and I had to make some tweaks to my post-processing. So that's what we're gonna go over today. I'm gonna show you guys how I overcame that issue. And this is really gonna help people that photograph the Milky Way and a foreground feature when they're using 20 millimeter, 24, 35, you know, 1.8 or 1.4 lenses, or if you have an APS-C sensor camera as well. So let's jump to the computer and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so here we are on the computer side of things and I have a series of photos that I took from when I was at Back Bay Wildlife Refuge in Virginia. And I found this cool piece of driftwood on the beach, so I decided to use that as my foreground subject. I took this with the new Nikon 20 millimeter 1.8S lens at ISO 5000, uh, f-stop of 2.2, and a shutter speed of 13 seconds. So if we zoom in here, you can see how nice and sharp these images are. Even towards the corners, this lens handles it very well. But as we scroll down, you're gonna notice that the driftwood is a little out of focus. And that's because I was standing too close to it for this lens. I'm so used to my Nikon 14 millimeter lens and my Tamron 15 millimeter lens that I could get away standing relatively close to my foreground subject and photograph the night sky with that foreground subject at infinity without any issues. Both of them would be in focus. Now, there's a very easy way to fix this without having to refocus on your foreground. Sometimes that's very challenging at night. So what I like to do is just change the f-stop. So here I changed the f-stop to 5.6, which might've been overkill. And I changed my shutter speed to 120 seconds and my ISO was 1600. So if we zoom in here, you could see that the driftwood is nice and sharp as well as behind it. Obviously the stars are going to be trailing because I did a two minute exposure and it is a little underexposed. So to fix that, I'm just going to lower my contrast and I could raise the exposure a little bit as well. Now for some people, this might be sufficient enough taking a single photo, uh, but I took four of them and that's because I plan on stacking these four just to clean it up a little bit further. So, I'm going to copy my settings and paste it to the other three images. So select the four photos and go to photo, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and I didn't move my tripod or anything like that. So I don't have to auto align or do anything other than grab my four images and convert them into a smart object. All right, so I'm just gonna make a copy of my smart object so I can show you guys the difference between uh, stacked and not stacked. So I'm gonna select one of the layers, go to layer, smart objects, stack mode, mean, all right, so that's finished stacking and that should have reduced the noise a little bit further. So let's zoom in here so we can take a look at the results and it looks nice and clean. I'll show you the difference between a single exposure versus stacking four of them. So that's a single, you can see all the noise in there. And it's not terrible, but you can make it even better by stacking some images together. And you can see it's nice and sharp um, in this driftwood and a lot less noise. So 
It's very clean just by stacking four images. Now you don't have to do four images. I just had enough time to do four. Maybe you only have enough time to do two or three. That's completely fine. Um, anything is better than just a single image to reduce some of that noise. So let's zoom out here. And I'm just gonna flatten my image and close it out and hit save. All right, so it automatically brought my image back into Lightroom and I have it right here. And what I'm gonna do is star it a four and that way I could distinguish it between the other photos that I have right here. And now I have to do my sky. So I'm going to select these 10 images. Now I have to export them because they're raw images and Starry Landscape Stacker doesn't recognize raw images right now, but it will recognize JPEGs or TIFFs. Typically, I'm going to use TIFF files for the best quality, but to save some time um, with my computer processor, I'm gonna make them JPEGs for this video. So I'm gonna go to File, Export. And make a folder called um, Milky Way Stack 1. And I'll just call this Driftwood. I'm not going to resize the fit. Resolution is going to be 240, which is what uh, my camera typically captures it at. And that is good to go. So now I'm gonna hit export. All right, so here's my folder with the 10 images that we're going to be stacking. Now this part's going to vary depending if you use a Mac or a PC. Since I'm on a Mac, I'm going to be using Starry Landscape Stacker. For PC users, you're going to be using Sequator. So let me find my images. Let's go to desktop. And I'm just gonna open up the images here. All right, so with Starry Landscape Stacker, I just have to put red dots in the sky. And I want to erase any red dots that are in the foreground. And then I'm going to choose Find Sky. And we'll fix this up here. Just want to make sure the sky is blue. So I'm going to paint along the edges. And I'm not going to go too crazy since we are replacing the foreground with an even better one. But let's just tighten this up a little bit. So once you're done separating the sky and the foreground, you're going to hit Align and Composite. And here is our stacked sky and foreground. So let's just zoom in. You can see how much it cleaned up that night sky even more. For something that was ISO 5000, it looks really good. So I'm gonna go to File, Save. And I'll just leave this on the desktop for now. So yes, we'll save it there. So here's my new stacked image that I'm going to bring back into Lightroom. So let's open up Lightroom. Just drop it into the library. Import. And again, I'm going to star this with a four. And let's go to all photos so I can see all my other photos. So now I have my two four stars and are not quite yet a five star image until I blend them together. So I'm going to select them both. Go to photo, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So as you see, there's a few extra steps when doing this technique, but if you're using a 20, 24, 35 millimeter lens at 1.8 or 1.4, and you're dealing with such shallow depth of field, this technique is gonna help you out tremendously. And this is also going to help if you're using an APS-C sensor as well. So here we are in Photoshop with my two images, and I'm just gonna make a copy, just in case I make any mistakes, I like to work with copies. And I will put, I'll leave uh, the sky layer on top, 
that's fine. I'm going to create a layer mask. Make sure I have black selected. Increase the size of my brush a little bit. I'll make the opacity around 75. We're just going to start painting away the foreground. Change the size of the brush if you need to when you're getting closer to the horizon. So let's just go in here and tighten that up. We can zoom in. And if you went too far, you could see some of the star trails. Um, switch this back to white. And we'll bring this back. And we're going to lower the opacity to get a better blend. If you wanted to, you could also do select a mask as well. But because this is a very simple photo with a sim simple transition from the horizon to the beach, um, I'm just going to use a brush. You get the idea. I'm going to switch to black and just go to 100% and make sure I got the foreground really good down here. Now's a good time to do whatever edits you prefer doing to your photos, like some S curves or some dodging and burning. I'm not gonna do that. My computer's just acting a little slow because I'm doing all this uh, heavy processing and I'm trying to record the screen as well. So things are kind of uh, bogged down at the moment. So I'm just gonna flatten my image. Now don't flatten a file if you plan on making more changes in the future, just export it out as a TIFF file and then save a Photoshop file so you could always come back and do some more editing as well. I'm just flattening it for this video just to save some time and bring it back into Lightroom. So I'm gonna hit save. So here we are with the final blended image. We have the stacked foreground blended with my starry landscape stacked sky and i'm going to make this five stars so that way i know it is the cleanest and sharpest image out of the whole bunch and i can do some further editing if need be so if we zoom in here i'm at two to one you can see how sharp and clean this foreground is compared to uh, the single images and if we scroll up same thing we got nice sharp stars even towards the corner, pretty good. And really clean for ISO 5000, but 10 photos stack does a great job. So hopefully this will help you guys out like it has for me. Take care, bye-bye.